The Hogyoku is a problem. Today we're going to talk about the Grand MacGuffin of Bleach's first major story arc. For those who don't know, a MacGuffin is an item in fiction that is ultra important to the characters, but isn't actually important to the story. A famous MacGuffin is Unobtainium from the Avatar movie. Humanity needs Unobtainium really badly because of its countless benefits to humanity. But the audience doesn't care a whit. Even the characters are distracted by other story points. If the MacGuffin appears in your head, it's just an afterthought. All it's meant to do is set a plot in motion. This is the first problem of the Hogyoku. MacGuffins are stupid, because who wants to set up an object in the story that serves no real purpose? I can already hear people, or voices in my head, saying that the Hogyoku isn't a MacGuffin because it actually does stuff. Well, therein lies our second problem. The Hogyoku does so many things that it should be as important as the One Ring from Lord of the Rings. But it's not. Sosuke Aizen cares about it. Kisuke Urahara cares about it. Nobody else does. It's basically a cheat device that passively grants the wishes of everyone around it. It doesn't have any limit to its power. And as we see with Aizen, it makes immortal whoever fuses with it. It's the ultimate weapon that no one wants. No one cares to know about it, and the ones who do don't care to obtain it. Yet, it single-handedly shapes the fate of all our human characters, as well as several Shinigami and hundreds of Hollows. We're fed conflicting information about the Hogyoku, as if the characters themselves, and possibly even the writer Taita Kubo, don't really know how it works. For example, we're told that it cannot outright grant wishes, rather it can spur rapid growth, from those with the willpower to grow their own power. But then we're also told that basic humans like Orihime and Sato had their own powers granted to them by the Hogyoku. Basic humans in this story can't just learn superpowers. Their powers must be given or shared to them, or they must already have some innate power. So these two facts about the Hogyoku outright discount each other. Finally, the reason the Hogyoku just doesn't work is this. Everything that happens because of the Hogyoku in the story could very easily have happened without the Hogyoku. Let's do a bit of a rundown to prove it. The first known use is when Aizen forced holification on Shinji and the rest of the soon-to-be visors. This was followed by Urahara using his own Hogyoku in an attempt to reverse the holification. However, the two greatest scientists in the story are Aizen and Urahara. They don't need the Hogyoku for this experiment. We could have very easily had Aizen just performing a random scientific experiment with the same results and for Urahara to step in and try to fix it. Urahara would then go through elaborate lengths in a vain attempt to hide his Hogyoku from existence forever. This would involve Rukia coming to Karakura Town. Well again, erase the Hogyoku and Rukia could still come to Karakura Town no problems had. When Rukia lends power to Ichigo, instead of the Hogyoku granting her guiltborn wish, Ichigo could simply be so strong that he takes way more power than he should have. You're sensing the trend, right? There's no point throughout the whole story where the Hogyoku's presence was at all necessary. Like I said, Aizen and Urahara are not only scientists, but the two smartest characters in the entire Bleach universe. All the holofication research that goes on and the transformation of several Arankar could simply be sinister experiments that still feeds Aizen's evil. The Espada could simply be stronger, instead of being artificially made stronger by the Hogyoku. In fact, I've always championed for Hollows in general to just be much stronger than they are in canon. I wanted so badly for Coyote Stark to be just as strong as Aizen, but due to his personality doesn't seek to overpower. Wouldn't that have been much more interesting and dynamic for the Hollows if they were a legitimate imbalance of power for the other characters? That would have made the Hollows seem so badass, as well as give us some sort of power scale to apply to Aizen. Because ultimately, even by the story's end, we still don't know how strong Aizen is. I think it can be assumed that he's at least as strong as Ewok, but unfortunately there's no way to really know for sure. The other Espada could have received their own equatable power boost as well. Barragan is the king of Hollows, and he's tricked into killing himself? It's a clever fight, but such a disappointing downfall for a cool character. Anyway, I've become distracted. 
Even in the final fight between Aizen and Ichigo, the Hogyoku is unnecessary. Instead of continually transforming Aizen in a desperate bid to protect him, we could simply reveal that Aizen has done countless experiments on himself in all the time since the story's start. Heck, we see Tosin as this ugly hollow monster. That could have so easily been foreshadowing to what Aizen has been up to in regards to his own body. As a direct result, when he runs out of Shinigami Reishi to weaponize, for example, his body could transform to reflect that of a hollow to use a more corrupt Reishi. When his hollow form is challenged, he transforms into a malformed monstrosity that's neither hollow nor Shinigami. These could have all been experiments he willfully used on himself to gain further power. After all, Sosuke Aizen is already an extreme powerhouse. At his defeat by Ichigo, he gets imprisoned because nobody has the power to kill him. Now that the only conceivable person who could sacrificed all of his power just to weaken Aizen enough to be captured. The Hogyoku is a fun concept, but on paper, it's ridiculous. It is the thief of fun, in fact. Not enough about it is known for daydreamers to imagine using it, and it's not overtly powerful enough to even consider weaponizing. The Hogyoku's problem is that it exists. Aizen is such a super genius that giving him some wish-granting super artifact like the Hogyoku weakens him as a threat, as the prime antagonist of the first arc. Imagine if all the events in the story were the same, except the Hogyoku didn't exist. Aizen would be an even scarier antagonist. Hollows could be far more powerful, naturally. Characters like Orihime and Saro could develop their powers naturally, giving hope to the readers that any human, at any point, could develop powers. This opens up wonder and curiosity about whether any further characters will gain power. Especially considering the Fulbring arc, which involves spiritually powerful human beings developing powers of their own. Why did Orihime and Chad require the Hogyoku to become strong, but the Fulbringers didn't? The Hogyoku created a lot of inconsistencies that we didn't really stand to benefit from. So when next you sit down to read or watch Bleach, just consider for a second just how useless the Hogyoku really is. For such a nearly omnipotent artifact, it really is quite useless. I'm not gonna lie, Bleach is one of my favorite manga of all time. I'm not a thoughtless fan that loves all the arcs, but I did enjoy the full bring arc, so that should tell you something. But the Hogyoku just throws out of whack any kind of power scaling we could have depended on, as well as messing up several characters that could have been badass in their own right. Imagine how badass Ukiora already is, and then imagine him being that strong without the Hogyoku. It would insert this real power struggle between the Espada, namely Ukiora, Stark, and possibly Yami, though I've I've never been in Yami's camp. The Zero is a lie. But that could have given us more story about just how much the Espada fight for their ranks amongst each other. Even Aizen's defeat wouldn't have been so invalidated, such as when Urahara suggested that for just a moment Aizen wished to be as weak as everyone else, which opened up a vulnerability through the Hogyoku. If that were true, then why wasn't everyone constantly trying to either attain or destroy the Hogyoku? It really is the antithesis of the One Ring. Everyone is after Sauron's ring, even the people who don't realize it yet. They're presented with the ring and they want it. They know Sauron's powered by it, and they know Sauron is super strong with it, so they try to destroy the ring. Why? The ring can't defend itself, it's just an inanimate object. Yet it's the most dangerous object in all of Lord of the Rings. But the ring is also a MacGuffin. So in my opinion, either everyone should have been focusing all their efforts on the Hogyoku, or it shouldn't have existed in the first place. Taitokubo set up an impossible narrative. And yes, I get it. Aizen is super strong, and he's got the Hogyoku on his person. Stealing it from him would be no easy task, but frankly, it would be better than what we got. Even Aizen's Shikai. In the flashback, he shows it to every single officer. Later, when he's come to the fake Karakura town to fight the Gotei 13, everyone now knows what his Shikai actually does. Yet they still all charge him, even knowing that this extremely smart character is probably hiding behind 30 illusions. It's madness, and a crazy destruction of the narrative. You can probably hear in my voice that I'm still sick. If I could be better by now, that would be amazing, but I'm not. Hopefully by next week I'll have finally kicked this nasty affliction. It's mostly just a sore throat now, so it's not as bad as it was.
Thanks everyone for listening in. This was a shorty that I really wanted to get to, and I'm super curious what other people's thoughts are on the Hogyoku and its impact on the world of Bleach. I've got an absolutely gigantic project coming up for the channel that I'm really looking forward to, but I need to finish up the Sakura rewrite first, and then we'll get to some real fun stuff. The sky's the limit.